singing when the saints go marching in this morning. Hello there, Scott. What about now? Let's stand together. One, two, three. And while we're singing this, just step One, across two, there and speak nothing. to somebody. How many want to be a part of that marching group? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We should practice. We should practice. Yeah. We could uh, march seven times around the church and see if the sun would go behind the clouds. No, we're, we're, glad, we're glad you're here this morning. What a blessing to be in God's house with God's people. I hope that you've come to worship today and to focus our hearts and our thoughts on the things of God and uh, let God speak to you. I think he's got something to say to everybody here today. And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to hear from God and uh, respond to God. Uh, if you're a guest with us, thank you so much for coming. We are honored that you've chosen to be here. And uh, we uh, ask that if you've got any prayer requests, uh, anybody has got any prayer requests, you can use that little tab that's in the... Uh, the bulletin and tear it off and place it in the offering plate and be assured that we will be praying over whatever matters that you have of concern uh, for you and we'll be happy to share in that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Well, Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together. We thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst and we pray, Father, that you would speak to us through music, through song, through your word, and through the presence of your spirit. Draw us close to you in Jesus' name. Amen. my redeemer lift me up from the grave love is the power where my freedom song is found and there ain't no grave 
gonna hold my body down ain't no grave gonna hold my body down when I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up out of that ground cause there ain't no grave gonna hold this body down Well, fear is a liar with a smooth and velvet tongue. Fear is a tyrant. He's always telling me to run. Oh, love is a resurrection. And love is a trumpet sound. And love is my weapon. I'm going to take my enemies down. And there ain't no grave going to hold my body. Ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down When I hear that trumpet sound Gonna rise up out of that ground And there ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down God was crucified. He went on down to hell. He took back every key. He rose up as the lion and he's setting all the captives free. And there ain't no grave could hold his body down. Ain't no grave could hold his body down. When he heard that trumpet sound, he rose up out of that ground and there ain't no grave. Could hold his body down, ain't no grave. Could hold his body down. Walked out of that grave I'm walking to. If he walked out of the grave I'm walking to. Oh, if he walked out of the grave I'm walking to. Since he walked out of the grave I'm walking to. Cause there ain't no grave. Gonna hold this body. Gonna hold this body down When I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up out of that ground And there ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down Ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down Amen Turn if you will in your hymnal to 691 Let's try this one again. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. A pilgrim was a
599. Going to ask you to stand again and we'll worship with our tithes and offerings for today. As God has blessed you, so you render back to Him. God bless you today as we do this. 599. Precious Lord, we thank you for this uh, opportunity to come to your throne of grace again. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of uh, the great bounty that you've given us, Lord. You've been so good to us in so many ways, not just financially, Lord, but we acknowledge your hand of mercy and your hand of helping with us day by day. And, Lord, we praise your name for it. Lord, we thank you for these songs. We thank you for this service today for each person that's here, Lord. I believe that it's a divine appointment that they be here right now. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to each of us uh, Lord, help us to hear your voice, help us to hear the direction and the conviction that you have for us. And, Lord, I pray for you to have a freedom to work here among us today. I pray, Lord, you would bless those that give and bless this gift, Lord, with, uh, to be used by your kingdom, Lord, in ways that bring glory to your name and is consistent with your desire and your plans. Uh, Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.
ask you to do something this morning, and I know it's going to be hard for some. Um, I look around the room and I realize that everybody here comes, we all come and gather uh, on Sunday mornings, and we all bring different things with us, uh, issues, concerns, uh, problems, needs, worries, fears. Everybody here has their own set of life issues, and uh, sometimes it's hard to set those aside uh, and focus, but I'm going to ask you to do something this morning that uh, is going to challenge you to do just that. Uh, Whatever you've brought with you today, it may be problems left over from last week or worries about tomorrow. (coughs) school starting this week, uh, family concerns, financial issues, whatever they may be, whatever may distract your heart and your mind just for the next few minutes, I'm asking you to intentionally and purposely set them aside. And I want you to focus on one thing. I want you to think about the Lord. I want you to think about the Lord. And to help us get into that frame of mind, I want you to listen to the song that's going to play in the video. The words will be on the screen. And just let your mind follow the thoughts that are being challenging us to think about and to focus on Him. Let the distractions of life go. And let's think about the Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What is God to you? What is God to you? Can you give me a one-word description or a phrase that declares to this group in this auditorium this morning what God is to you? Savior, everything. Provider. Redeemer. The way. Comforter. Strength. Your life. What else? Peace. Love. Present. What else? All. Rhythm. Freedom. Freedom. Mmm. Mm. All. Awesome. What is God to you today? Is it worth shouting about? Is it worth celebrating? Is it worth, is it worth getting happy about? It is. This morning we're going to take a look in the book of Isaiah in chapter 12. We're going to look at the, the six verses in that chapter, and we're going to look at what the prophet Isaiah has to declare that we can declare. We can see this. We can read this and, and understand that these words that he was speaking on behalf of the nation of Israel are words that can be true for us today. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 6 says this, it says, In that day you will sing, I will praise you, O Lord. You were angry with me, but not anymore. Now you comfort me. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. He's given me victory. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day, you will sing, Thank you, Lord. Praise his name. Tell the nations what he's done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout, his praise with joy. For great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. Amen. Do you get it? Do you see it? Did you catch a glimpse of these declarations that the prophet Isaiah makes that are so true, can be so true in our lives? First of all, he declares in verse 2, my translation states it this way. It says, see, God has come to save me. But I, I tell you, I love the, the way the new King James states it. He says, behold. <laughs> There's something more to that than look. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yahweh, the Lord, is my strength and song he also has become my salvation. Are you here this morning and can you make that declaration? Along with the prophet Isaiah, along with others here today and say, God is my salvation. You see, I was condemned. I was condemned. I was condemned when I was born. I was born with a sinful nature. And you see, Psalm 711 says this, God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. But John 318 says this. He says, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. He is my salvation. God is my salvation. He has made a way. 
He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one can come unto the Father and experience God as his salvation apart from Jesus Christ. I was condemned. But I declare this morning, God saved me. God saved me. Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 through 3 says this. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of a pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Do you get the imagery? Can you see the imagery how this depicts being stuck in the mud and mire of sin and the things of this world? You ever been walking through mud before? If you got your shoes on, you'll leave your shoes behind just like that if you're not careful when you go to jerk your foot out of that and it goes... It sucks it out, and you, you can't move. I'm here to tell you it says that Jesus lifted me up. God lifted me up out of the muck and mire of sin. Now, I want to tell you what he didn't do. He didn't just throw a lifeline down. He didn't just throw a rope down. He didn't just hang this rope over the pit that I found myself in and said, Grab hold of that. That's not what he said. He said, he lifted me up. You know, when, I, when I, I, I read that, and the imagery that I get is that he stepped into it with me. He stepped into it, and he took my place, and he lifted me up and pushed me to the top and set my feet on solid ground. And then you know what he did? Because of where I'd been, and because of the strain and the, and the struggle when we find ourselves in sin. You see, we, we're not free. We're, we're, we're captives. When we're there, we're captives. And we strain and we struggle and we fight and we lose our strength. It said that he set my feet on solid ground. And, and it says that he, let me, let me get the right words. He said, he set my feet on solid ground and he steadied me. As I walked along. Now, now, here's the imagery that comes to my mind. He didn't just say, okay, I'll follow you. He put his arm around me. And he walked with me at the pace that I could travel. And he held me up. And he held me close. And he took me to the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. I don't know about you, but that's, that when you stop and you think about it, you say, I was condemned. But God saved me. He lifted me up. He set me on solid ground, and he walked with me. And took me by the hand. You've sent, we've talked about this before in Isaiah uh, it talks, I think, I, I forget, I think it's chapter 42, I think it talks about that God will take you by his righteous right hand. But he, 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 the, uh, there's another verse right before that that says he'll take your right hand. And it's right hand to right hand, which is face to face. That's Jesus. God is my salvation. I declare that to you today, and I pray that's your declaration as well. So I claim that from what the prophet Isaiah says. He also says this. He says, God is my strength. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2, he says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yahweh the Lord is my strength and my song. He's also become my salvation. You see, you can go a long way in your own strength. You can but it's amazing. It, 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 you stop and think about it. It's amazing how, what, as human beings, all that we can do. 
but there will be a time. I didn't say there may be a time. There will be a time when you find that you need strength beyond yourself. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you are there today. You need strength beyond yourself. It may be when you lose a job. It may be when your health fails. It may be when you have struggles in your marriage or problems with your children. Because the world will come at you from every different direction with problems and issues and concerns and fears and worries that try to captivate your mind and take your heart and your thoughts away from the things of God. The day will come when you need God's strength. Then you'll find that life is so much better when you simply trust Him and rely on His strength all the time. You can't bear a lot on your own but why would you want to? Think about it. Psalm chapter 18, verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the strength, the strength of my salvation. Wow. We just declared a moment ago that God is my salvation. And now we're making the declaration that God is my strength. Put them together. God is the strength of my salvation and my stronghold. Psalm 18, 2. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why would you want to simply trust in your own abilities and your own strength? Psalm 46, 1, 2, and 3 says, God is our refuge and strength always. You hear me? Listen. Always ready to help in times of trouble. What does that indicate to you? God is always ready to help in times of trouble. What do, you have, what do you have to do when trouble comes? It's, scripture says that he's always ready to help, so what do I need to do when I face trouble? Call him. Help! Help me, Jesus. Lord, help me. He's always ready. Always ready. He's our refuge and strength, ready to help in times of trouble. It says, so we will not fear. Even, listen to this, even when earthquakes come. Anybody been through an earthquake before? A small one. A few of us, a few folks, Terry and I, we went through earthquakes when we were living in Costa Rica on several occasions. They're very frightening things. It says, we will not fear even when earthquakes come and mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. Why, how can the psalmist say that? You, he can say that because he declares at the beginning, God is my refuge. God is my strength. No matter what trouble this world brings my way, God is ready to help. All I've got to do is call on him. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 says this, Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually, continually seek him. Continually means... <laughs> Let me put it this way. Continually means every day that ends in Y. Every day. Seek Him. Seek His strength. 
search for him. So God is my salvation. God is my strength. You see, God's grace is absolutely incredible. It's the grace of God that's providing and enabling us and giving us the power and the strength that we need for life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, it says this. It says, each time he said, remember Paul? Paul, and he had, he had those, that thorn in the flesh, and he prayed and asked God to relieve him. He says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power, my power works best in weakness. Now, we're talking about strength. God wants us to be weak so that he can be strong. And that literally means that we've got to get out of the way and let God be God. In every aspect of our life, it's as Paul says, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, I'm strong. How can it be? It happens under his power, under his strength, not under mine. He is my salvation. He is my strength. And then the prophet Isaiah makes this declaration in chapter 2. I mean, chapter, verse 2 of chapter 12 says, See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord is my song. <laughs> Some of you are afraid right now that I'm going to call on you to sing your song. Some of you, that'd be all right. What are some of the characteristics that ought to be a part of your song? Isaiah 12, 6 says, Shout aloud and sing for joy. It needs to be a song of joy. Stop and think about it. What, what, when we paused earlier and I asked you to set aside the things and the worries and the concerns of life for just a few moments and think about the Lord. Think about the Lord. How he saved you. The song says how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost and filled me to the uttermost. When you stop and think about it, can you, <laughs> how can you not smile? How can you not experience the joy of the Lord when you stop and think about that all that he's done for you? Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. So joy ought to be a part of our song that he's given us. Also in verse 4 of chapter 12, it says, In that wonderful day you will sing, Thank the Lord. Praise His name. Tell the nations what He's done. Let them know how mighty He is. Another element, another characteristic of our song should be joy. It should be praise. Praise Him. Psalm 9, 2 says this. It says, I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. You know what praise is? Praise is giving credit where credit is due. Recognizing that it's God who's done the work in your life of bringing salvation, bringing strength, bringing this song of praise and joy and all that God has done for you. So it needs to be a song of joy, a song of praise, but it also is a song of comfort. A song of comfort. In Psalm 42, 8, it says, But each day the Lord pours His unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing His songs, praying to God who gives me life. Have you felt the comfort of God? Comfort comes, I was going to use the word disguised, but it's not disguised. 
Comfort comes in the form of peace. And peace comes when we focus our thoughts and our minds on Him. Those few moments that we set aside to think about Him, I'm telling you, they were worth everything that we set aside just to focus and think about Him because when we do that, peace comes. Comfort, God's comfort through the Spirit of God. It says in Psalm 42, 8, it says, But each day the Lord pours His unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing this His song, praying to God who gives me life. So it's a song of joy, a song of praise, a song of comfort, but it's a song, also a song of testimony. You got a testimony this morning? You have a song. You have a song of testimony. Tell others about your song of salvation. That's what we're singing. That's what we're talking about. A song of salvation. Isaiah 12, 4 says, In that wonderful day, in that wonderful day, you will sing, thank the Lord, praise His name, tell the nations what He has done. Let them know how mighty He is. Well, Brother Joe, how in the world do I do that? You know, I don't have, a, <laughs> I, I don't make, I don't, I don't have any way of communicating with the nations. Can I bring it home for you? How about the world you live in? The people around you, in the workplace, at home, your family, your neighbors, your friends. Have you sung your song of salvation to them? You say, Brother Joe, I don't have a voice to sing. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you've got the heart and the Spirit of God living in you, you've got a song to sing. You say, Brother Joe, I don't know the tune to the song. That's okay. God does. And when you get out of the way and let God sing that song through you, that song is sung through you by the manner in which you live your life by the things that you say, the things that you do, as well as the things you fail to do. Singing that song of salvation to the nations is sharing that song with the world you live in. Isaiah 12, 5 says, Sing to the Lord, for He has done wonderful things. Think about it. We talk about here at Dry Creek God moments all the time. We ask, what are your God moments? What's God doing in your life? Can I tell you, you can sum it up in this. What, is the, what are the wonderful things that God has done for you today, yesterday, this week, this month, this year, throughout your life? They can be broad and, 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 and large things that he's done, but they can be small, <laughs> tiny whispers and directions that he's guided you in. And when you acknowledge that it's him that's done these things, not just happenstance, <laughs> you're giving praise and credit where credit is due. So here we are, making declarations. Can you, will you, thank God for all that He's done for you, for all that He is to you? I began by asking a question, what is God to you? And I, Terry and I were talking, I was talking to her, and I had, and had used that terminology, what is God to you? And she said, don't you mean who? I said, well, not in this circumstance. What? God is my salvation. That's a what. God is my strength. That's a what. And God is my song. Can you say that God is your salvation today? 
can you say that you're drawing on His strength every day, all the time? Are you singing the song that God has given you? That song of salvation, that song of testimony, that song of praise, that song of comfort, and that song of joy by the way you live out your life. When people look at you, do their thoughts go towards, boy, you can see the joy in that person. You can see the peace in that life. Who do you know? Who do you know? We've been asking that question for the last two months. In June, we asked, who do you know that needs encouragement? In July, we asked, who do you know that needs restoration? Who do you know that needs salvation? My guess there's not a person in this room that doesn't have someone in your life that you know in your heart of hearts is lost. And they're not headed in the direction that God wants them to go. Who do you know that needs salvation? This is what we've been talking about. We've been, we, we, I've asked you, can you declare that God is my salvation? God is my strength. God is my song. We have a responsibility to share this truth, these declarations, with our world. So who do you know? Who do you know that needs salvation? You say, well, Brother Joe, it's, it, 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 I don't know what to do. Well, let me, let me make a couple of suggestions. Pray for them. You say, well, I've been praying for them a long time, long time. Can I t- and invite you to share who they are? You've, we've got little prayer boxes here. Prayer, you can write their names on it. Pray for so-and-so. They need salvation. There's one in the foyer. There's one here. Let us know. Let us join you in praying. And then sing your song. Tell them about what God has done for you. Let them see the evidence of the strength of God in you and the evidence of His salvation living through you. If you do it, I promise you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed how God will take it and use it in the lives of those that he's bringing into your world. Father, I pray in this place right now, if there's anybody here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that they could not make that declaration that God is my salvation, that they've not trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior, Father, I pray that right now your Spirit is drawing them to you and speaking into their heart and saying, come to me, child. I'm calling you to me. Come to me and confess. Come to me and repent. Come to me and I will save you. God, there's others that may be here this morning that are simply struggling with life. They're just so concerned with the issues and the problems and the things that they're going to face when they walk out this building, God, and they've come here seeking some answers. God, I pray right now you would be their peace. And God, you would be their comforter and you would speak to their spirit, Father, and let them know that you're here to receive them. Here, there are people here that would be willing to pray with them, God. God, I pray you would set them free from the bondage of what is holding them back. God, there may be others here today that simply say, I I need somebody to just simply pray for me. I, I, 
I don't know how to get out of this mess I'm in. Well, we're here worshiping a God who knows all and can do all. So I invite you to come to Him today. Don't wait. You come. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation in just a minute. And as we do, we invite anyone here today that has a decision to make or a prayer that they want to get on their face before God here publicly, please do it. There may be somebody here today that wants to unite with this church and become a part of this church family. We invite you to come and let me pray with you and talk with you. Let God be God in your life and in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit today. Don't wait. Father, take this time and anoint this time and use this time to draw people to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand? We'll sing 504. With Oh, Jesus, do you?